Hello guys. I am Max, from Maxotech. This is a tutorial on handling email bounces using AWS. A typical cloud-based application sends a user several types of emails. These include account information to verify the email address and reset passwords. Notifications for updates and support queries, payments, refunds, OTPs for transactions, invoices and delivery of digital assets. Applications must handle bounces and complaints to limit the damage to their domain's email reputation, too much of which can put the account at risk. You must remove non-engagers who have been ignoring your emails to avoid getting into a spam trap. Although sending an email through AWS is cheap, sending thousands of emails per day is not. Handling bounces and complaints reduce the number of overall emails sent. AWS has fairly aggressive reputation checks for emails. It sends emails from its IP address pool. Any reputation damage to them affects the ability of other customers sending emails as well. AWS will warn you if your account crosses a 5% bounce rate or a 0.1% complaint rate. A 10% bounce rate or a half a percent complaint rate can result in your email sending being completely disabled. Therefore, you must put in measures to handle bounces and complaints. While AWS offers the building blocks for such a system, you must put it together yourself. Let's take a look at a basic architecture to solve this problem. Email sent through SES API need a custom header that provides the name of a configuration set. The configuration set contains an SNS event destination and a list of event types. These event types include sends, deliveries, bounces, complaints, etc. These events are then written to the SQS queue using SNS. Your application consumes the events from the queue and stops sending emails to problematic email addresses. Let's see these in action using the AWS console and .NET Core. Head over to the SES dashboard inside the AWS console and go to Configuration Sets. Click on Create Set. Give the configuration set a name and click on Create Set again. Now we need to add an event destination to the newly created configuration set. Click on the Event Destinations tab. Hit the Add Destination button. Select all the event types you want to handle. At the minimum, select Hard Bounces and Complaints. Click Next. Select Amazon SNS from the destination type and give the destination a name. Click on Create SNS Topic. Give your new topic a name and optionally a display name. Click on Create Topic. Select the newly created SNS Topic as the destination. Hit Next. Finish by clicking on Add Destination. Your event destination is now ready to route email events to SNS. For the next part, we need to head over to the SQS dashboard and create a new queue to store our events. Give the queue a name. Leave all the other settings at their defaults and click on the Create Queue button. You have created the SQS queue. We need to subscribe to the previously created SNS topic to receive the events from SES. Select the topic you created and click on Save. We need to make one more change to our subscription. The console does not allow us to do this when creating a new subscription. Select your subscription and view it on SNS. Notice that the raw message delivery option is disabled. We need to turn it on. I will explain what it does in a bit. Click on Edit. Check the Enable Raw Message Delivery checkbox and hit Save Changes. You need to perform an additional step if you are using CloudFormation to do all of this. Click on the Access Policy tab. You'll notice that the SQS policy allows your SNS topic to send messages to the queue. Make sure you add this policy as a resource in your CloudFormation template. SQS will not receive the messages without it. Let's click on the Send and Receive Messages button. Your queue is empty right now. Let's populate it by sending an email through the SES API. Here is a C-sharp code that you can run to send the email. We are sending a raw email message. Make sure your IAM user has the appropriate permission for it. The NuGet package for SES provides us with this API. The MimeKit library allows us to send custom email headers. This custom AWS header tells SES the configuration to use for the email. From there, it follows your event destination, sends the events to the SNS topic and eventually to the SQS queue. AWS does all the heavy lifting behind the scenes to handle format variations between different ISPs. Our SNS topic gets the messages in a consistent format which we can then handle. After executing the program, you will see that two messages are now available in SQS. Let's pull the queue. Here are the two messages. I can click on the IDs to see the message details. Here we have JSON embedded in JSON. The outer portion is the SNS wrapper. The message is what interests us. The raw message delivery setting, 
which we turned on previously, allows us to get cleaner messages. This event tells us that SES sent the message to the destination email address. When the message is delivered, the destination ISP notifies AWS, and SNS sends us a delivery message. Here's how a bounce message looks like for an email address that does not exist. Notice the bounce type. We don't want to send any further emails for permanent bounces. A delay-based retry mechanism can take care of transient bounces, such as when a user's inbox is full. We can grab the destination email address from the property called bounced recipients. The diagnostic code gives us the raw SMTP error. Here's a simple worker I implemented in .NET Core. It processes the SQS messages programmatically. I registered an email log processor service using dependency injection, and then injected it into the worker class. The start polling method initiates the polling process on the SQS queue. The service class declares a bunch of constants. The first being our queue name, followed by a batch size of how many SQS messages to process together, and a poll duration. The polling does not run continuously. Instead, it runs on a schedule. I have set it to wait for 15 minutes when the queue is empty. The queue URL stores the information we need to query SQS. And the client allows us to connect to SQS using the new GET package from AWS. Inside the start polling method, we first find out the URL of the queue. And then keep pulling it until interrupted by the cancellation token. The batch size limits the number of messages received from SQS. We wait for 15 minutes if the queue is empty. Otherwise, we process the messages. We go through each message and deserialize the JSON into our model classes using the new tonesoft.json library. Then, we process each event and maintain a list of bounced email addresses. We then put the message in a batch for deletion, and delete them at the end. Finally, we want to handle our custom business logic for the bounced email addresses. If you are using the identity framework, you could lock the account, or put a flag next to the user's record in the database to disable email sending. You can use my website toolslick.com to generate C-sharp classes from the JSON message in SQS. The process event method goes through each event and looks for permanent bounces. It parses the recipient's email address, removes any name component, and returns the raw email address ready to be disabled. Otherwise, it returns null. Not the cleanest logic for an actual application, but it gets the job done for our tutorial. If we find any entries to delete inside the consume messages method, we do so in a batch using the SQS API and clear our local cache. That's it folks. Thanks for watching the tutorial, and I'll catch you in the next one.